Holy cow, here we go again. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show and thank you for subscribing and hitting that like button. Did you know that YouTube announced that they are going to hide the dislike button? You can't see it, but I can see it. So they're going to hide the results, I guess. I, I'm not quite sure. I guess we're just all so sensitive now. Um, there was a period there. See, when you like or dislike, I don't get to see who does it. Uh, but there was a period there where I just had one guy that kept hitting the dislike button. It's like, who is this guy? <laughs> I think it was a relative. But anyway, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to take a look at some numbers. We're going to compare to 2005 and now. And, uh, and we're going to look at how rent prices factor into this inventory equation that we're seeing. Right now, we only have 7290 homes on the market. That's about 200 less than last week. It's going to go down and down and down. And uh, so it's going to slow down as we get closer to Thanksgiving. I have a little warning here that says the stream's current bit rate is lower than recommended. We recommend you use stream bit rate of 4,500. I don't think I can do anything about that right now. So <laughs> it's just going to wing it. See what happens, folks. If I'm having any buffering problems on your end, let me know. Um, so, hey, here's our first featured listing from EXP Realty, this is out in Gilbert. It's 775,000. And you can see that it is built for the whole family. Um, this is a uh, huge, huge place. And it's got, uh, let's see, a nice pool room. And so anyway, the link is below in the body. I like to just throw up a home from time to time. And uh, sometimes I go in and I look at uh, some of the listings and I think, oh, this is cool, but they're photos are awful and agents i will not share your listing if your photos stink so i want to be able to see what it looks like now look at what redfin came up with or not redfin look at what's going on in california um, october california sales sales down 10.4 percent year over year interesting california is a key market and sometimes we see trends in california early Unfortunately, the California market doesn't release monthly sales or inventory numbers, not seasonally adjusted. But they're saying that the sales pace dipped 0.9% on a monthly basis, but was down 10.4% from a year ago. But the problem is active listings are down 18.3% versus a year ago. So you still got that same pinch going on. So, yep, sales are down 10, but inventory is down 18. You still got a supply issue. Here's my Redfin article I wanted to show you. It says that second home demand rose 70% from pre-pandemic levels in October. You're all out there buying those second homes right now, and it's showing up. And it's interesting. It says down here, many companies have solidified their remote work policies, which is fueling continued demand for vacation homes, said the Redfin economist. So as more companies say, okay, uh, we're, we're letting you stick to work from home. People are, they're out of here. I mean, they can go live in different states. Uh, perhaps here in Arizona, they'll stay down in the Phoenix market in the winter months, head up to Payson, Flagstaff, Sedona in the, in the uh, summer months. So it remains to be seen. But uh, anyway, the market is strong. And I look at uh, cabins and stuff up in Payson, Stra Pine, and Strawberry, and their prices are going through the roof. So that is definitely something that's a trend and it's happening. So what's going on when we compare active listings to 2005? So what the Crawford Report says here is, is, although prices have risen dramatically over the last year, the situation is very different from 2005. So we're going to examine the number of active listings across all areas, using the monthly active listing chart. So here's 2005, it's the green number. See how um, they just kind of spiked up right here. So they're gonna explain it. 2005, 2020, and 2021, and in 2005, you can see that in March and April, the counts were extremely low. That's back here. Extremely low compared to the rest of the year, right? Okay, and then it says, however, the rapid increase in price and massive building for new homes fueled the situation in just about six months. It said turn the situation, not fuel. Demand dropped because of the high pricing and supply increased because builders opened new sun subdivisions as if there was no limit to the market, causing the supply to jump and the market stalled as supply Trend, what did it say? Trebled in just nine months. So basically what they're saying is 
you know, builders were just building like there was no tomorrow. And I used to talk to people and say, you know, back then, 2005, building is what was fueling our economy. But I said, it's not a perpetual motion machine. Construction can't fuel construction. So what's going on here? They were building more homes than people were moving here. The numbers were obvious, just absolutely obvious. And what they say here is this was the popping of the bubble, which was clearly audible even before Michael Bury figured it out. He's pretty famous for calling the bubble. Unfortunately, few people took any notice because they had somehow come to believe that prices never go down. I mentioned that just the other day. You better buy now or you'll never be able to buy again. House, house prices are a trailing indicator. And it was mid-2006 before they started going down across the greater Phoenix area. Now, see this? What they're saying here is as inventory was going up, prices didn't come down until the next year. So this is a leading indicator of where prices are going to go. Here's the interesting part. In 2001, supply has increased during the last seven months, but not by very much, and has even declined since October. It remains lower than it was in 2020. Prices are very unlikely to go down, while supply remains this low. The idea that supply will increase dramatically because of people coming out of forbearance is unsound. The volume of borrowers in such difficulties is too low. We've looked at that too. So how's this situation going to change? Well, a lot of current demand is coming from large-scale investors buying new and resale homes to rent to tenants. We covered that yesterday. They're, they're building these to-rent communities, and, uh, and then they're scooping up homes, putting them on the market. If this demand were to suddenly evaporate, we could see the demand drop between 500,000 and 1,000 homes per month. This would cause supply to grow could even double after 12 months. So we could be at 14,000 after a year. That's pretty slow, but it's double. However, there's almost no sign of these investors losing steam right now. If anything, they're getting more motivated. But one day they'll ease up, and when they do, this will cause significant softening of demand. So when is they, when are they going to back off? Well, we don't know, but here's how we can begin to see it. They will back off once rent starts declining. So this is the chart that the Cromford market recommends that we watch closely along with inventory levels. Right now, this is the monthly average lease price per square foot. You can see it's, it shows that it's gone down, but let's, let's be real about it. Average price per square foot is $1.37, and now it's $1.34, so it's gone down $0.03. Cents. So if this starts getting down to lower levels like down here, and uh, I mean, I don't see it getting down to 90 cents per square foot. But if rent starts going down and investors find other places to put their money, they're going to start putting the homes on the market. When? I don't know. It's just another number to watch. So that inventory level, which we talked about yesterday, it says our normal, our average that we've had in our extreme numbers is 27,400 homes. We're sitting at 7,200 now. So if we start getting up in that 27,000 range, we get to normal. Now you have a balanced market. I still think that the buyer traffic will start to follow the increase in inventory because the only reason that the buyer traffic, the under contract numbers are as low as they are now, you just simply can't find the home you want. So you're not you're not writing the contract. So that will go up exponentially, but it'll hit a ceiling. But if inventory continues to rise above that and rents start to come down because they've overbuilt, and that's highly possible, but we're talking one to two years out here. So that's not something that just turns all of a sudden. You don't wake up the end of January and go, oh my God, we got too many rentals. So that's a number that's going to churn slowly and we're going to have to watch it. So it'll continue to show up in inventory. It'll continue to show up in rental prices. And it would be a nice change, wouldn't it? To be able to see some homes come on the market that we can all afford. So we'll keep watching it here. Thanks for subscribing and thanks in advance for hitting that like button. Have a great day.